It's time for Eric Plays Beckett, episode three. Hey there. So I'm using a noise gate and a couple other noise suppression things that seem to have worked pretty well for me in the last game I recorded. Hopefully it doesn't uh, end up in things being cut out in this one. May or may not. I'll tweak it based on that. We'll see. It does have the benefit of not picking up my ums. So that should help people. All right, let's go. Weird ass game again. Am I in the right place? I think I am. Let's see here. The curtains of the second floor window are tied back. Pops her armpits under her breast and belly with an old cloth. Keeps her eyes away from the street with secret hopes that others will focus and stare. Her skin is pale and loose. Hair is black. Tied back. The floor below the curtains are closed. A still of a man holds a wood handled brush or a shovel. Over his head, he brings it down the floor repeatedly. Vermin and Burrow had long, had long been a problem. He used to live with it or wage a personal... There's definitely, uh, you know, a tension between wanting and not wanting to be seen. Hey, mister, you looking for something? <coughs> Excuse me. Looks like this guy maybe has a gun? You okay? <coughs> yes, of course. Check it. Get yourself together. Last time he had this like treatment that may or may not have missed. <coughs> Do you know the park? Sure. Live around here. It's our battleground. Oh yeah. That's it's this like this repeating sound of a gun as his thing. Like it of course is coffee. <coughs> flowers are the flowers and daisies might have been picked from Monument Park. He pictures her couch watching television. Flowers, yeah. You like violet? Not a flower person, my wife. She was. No, at the window I saw you looking. She's Violet, so the, the girl up there was Violet. Here's what the grease and his teeth are a disaster. <coughs> looking for flowers, can you help me? Here, come on, I'll show you. Don't know where he went. B17. Whatever that means. Well, this is random. The trees shiver and sway. Gentle breeze against. Uh, sorry, gentle against a delicate breeze that touches cool across Beckett's skin. The sky commands a pale blue wash, and the cherry blossoms dance. Blue green, pink melts. Birds perch on branches, bees swim in the air, hung flowers, children, pets, and parents play on the grass. Monument Park is a place of tranquility and escape. Breathe in its air, fill your lungs. Moment is yours. Oh no, I went with a strange fake British accent there at the end. Uh, bird? Dead bird, maybe? I don't know. Game. Edgar would visit the park with his parents in summer months. They'd bring a wicker basket and form a postcard pose on the shallow bourbon banks. Cower blocks grew out of treetops. Birds tended their nests. Becca would classic tour. Place them in the grass, a game of hide and seek for imagined war. Parents were young then, younger than he is now. They held hands and dreamt of growing old together. Nonetheless. Ant. Hopefully the boy came this way. I'm saying boy. Well, I guess they said boy. Okay. You're pretty slow, mister. Man, I never want to get old. Hey, it's over there. The flowers are down that way. Hope you find what you're looking for. 
Guessing this is the monument, yep. for this man's strength and skills. This was the beginning of the end. A powerful man hollows out and crack as the crack spread his frame breaks in. These were the better days before unemployment, the payoff before father would be at home and casting his sunken eyes over the bike rack. Never wanted retirement people out. But he built the engines that spun in the power station between 32,000 volts and effective robotic arms. Second father was a union representative at Parsons College. Colleagues were his family, more so than his wife and child. He returned at night with dirt on his nails and whiskey on his breath. He wasn't a bad man. Hmm. So, kind of a story so far between the, uh, the kid that we're looking at. That stuff. Not only a dystopia, but also a tale of loop to collar work being replaced. Makes sense why it's called the Monument Park. Egg, is this for, like a guy being pushed down or something? Maybe it's Icarus? Let me really put more. Prepare some components of expectation and completion. And they are in November. It's the natural order of the Fall from the sky, those angels who rear us love us perfectly. That was definitely one of the lessons of the uh, talk, I'll tell you that. Flowers are being tended by the park keeper, dressed in overall, staying at the knees. Something from the past, present, and future. Conversations we had here. The barkeeper is a stooped older man. His head gleams when the clouds part to let through the sun's rays. His mouth is a litter box cut with a knife and a melted wax face. That is not a way I want someone to ever describe me. Hello, Beckett, said Jimmy. Well, this guy knows me. <coughs> yeah, know each other growing up. Here you go. Keeping well. Beckett buys it. <coughs> <coughs> Nothing changes Jimmy, you know, nothing changes. There should be a comma there. <laughs> you know that. This isn't change. I can despise this smart talk. <coughs> Interesting, a young man in his 20s, thin blonde hair, ponytail, birthmark on his face. Hi, I know that one keeps picking my flowers. Went through here today. Over there, stone his woes to the senseless old bat. He was referring to the oracle. <coughs> Reckon he slept here last night? I don't know. Enough for me to get those ranchers over there off their boxes on the screen. My folks come to listen out. He coughs out a muted laugh. The conversation has nowhere else to go. Beckett notices a swelling behind Jimmy's right ear, blotchy and red. It's of no consequence. It really relishes in giving us weird details. <coughs> He's a mother, Jim. You know your mother was a lovely person. She didn't deserve what happened to her at the end. None of us do.
Lost cause, that says. Giving me hints not to go over here. The air of calm and tranquility stirs around the woman on the bench. She's the oracle. At least that's what they call her. That's what they say. Her world isn't ours. Beckett isn't part of it yet. Now sit by her. Pause the rift. She sits motionless on the bench, lost in reality, comes without influence or interference with the world outside. A cloud of tiny specks spin around her frame. A halo of tiny insects. Here in places, hand on hers, turns toward Beckett with white, clouded eyes. Countless the cancer had taken her. Her existence is maintained by the prickling bites of midges. What? How are they keeping. What? Uh, the old woman's ears are crusted with wax. She hears nothing. I'm looking for Peregrine Starlight, and he was talking with you this morning. Beckett lets go of the old woman's hand. He gets up and puts a few coins into her tent. Keeper would be by later in exchange for earrings for bread and milk. I don't understand any of that. What any of that was. Jellyfish at some point there. Have some kind of fruit or something? Some veggies maybe? I don't know if I'm supposed to click or let this play out. Flowers live less than a day. If I clicked to make that happen, so I think I'll just keep clicking through. Assuming nothing is going to happen if I just leave it alone. Some live for weeks. Lifespan is of no consequence. Their purpose is clear. Which is what? Feed bees? I don't Beckett seeks forgiveness from whom he doesn't know. The mother attended church until she was unable to leave her bed. She'd been alone. Beckett should have spent more time with her in his own problems. But this woman who brought him into the world lay staring at him. While the cancer ate her from within was of no concern to him. Another sin. Religion has planted the seeds of eternal damnation and try as he might to reason with its illogic misdeeds with its illogic misdeeds fester in the back of his mind. Life is no worse than others, but this his sins terrify him. Sure, I can see that. Books up on books. One on top. Top of books. Something. Very weird. Alright, let's go meditate about flowers or something? I don't know. Boys were crowding around a small stone circle, pebbles packed tight. 
Inside Zack Cockroaches. Fat crimson machines, each with a plastic figure glued to its back. Cowboys, Indians, and modern military. Boys use sticks to prod at the insects shuffled in response. Close tattoo and intact, each eye with a thousand lenses, tiny hearts beating inside. They would approach each other and the boys would holler. Two cockroaches had their riders entwined. The boys laughed. Another man just escaped the circle. Then he gets stomped. Back was his. Yep, <laughs> I knew it. All the boys started crying. Everybody else laughed. There's a moment, memories from another universe creeping into his, a dizzying realization there's a significance in its object in front of him. This is important. Step forward, Beckett. Hear what your mind has to say. Alright, so we finally reached the important one here. Let's see, someone on their knees. Perhaps a woman? Maybe I'm reading too much. But I'm going like this is what I'm seeing. All those moments that were real now stored in gray matter. A fictional archive. Cover versions. Do you remember the, her face? Think. Think, Beckett. Do you remember her face? <laughs> Open the box. Look at what was. You can construct the past, its present, and live in that moment just for a moment. Hold on to those that you love. Oh, Beckett, hold on. That monument change? Faces forgotten to names. Photographs from each line of brains. Faces forgotten to names. Life stains memories. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, it always had the one arm down, one arm up. Okay, I see. I wonder where the heck this is a monument to. I see the worker in the background there. War was fought and won. Panic memories twisted and rewritten. Monuments raised to celebrate those who were killed and those that ordered the kill. Army. Amy was a pacifist. Beckett stands motionless and motionless. His face is set in stone. Time passes. Move on. It would lie on the grass. She would touch his hair. Someone somewhere said life isn't fair. And as the world reaches its next moment, Beckett resolves to get something to eat. From there to the theater in time for tonight's show. Not yet. The review. Assuming he's going to the show the kid had tickets to? And achieved the, uh, not the achievement, monuments. Playing until her fingers bled. Sadness, something I can't read. Uncontrollable happiness and confusion. There was a true love there. Okay, so I kind of see like a dude's nose on the right side, a ear towards right. Beckett, he kind of bullish looking dude. Amy worked further to a depression. Beckett was no longer enough for her. She sought solace in others, and afterwards, well in her guilt and confession, tears painted black veins down her perfect face, but she made no effort to change her way. You, my mind, could never love me, she cried. Beckett wanted her as she was, wanted what they had had, regardless of who she was now. He was persistent, strong, forgiving, and insanely jealous. He tried to hold on to the best of her, but now his collection of destroyed memories tend to misery and pain. Her divine beauty, skin, and shape tinted with the vivid light of her death mask, rhythmic motion of lovemaking replaced with a steady swing of a cold, inanimate body. Bub and creak of rope fibers. A private viewing. Not everyone can cry. Beck and dig on his hands. Pain helps the. All right. So it seems like that last, the last two panels there are that she hung herself, or he hung her. I think she hung herself because she was dealing with depression. But not sure. 
underneath the image has changed. It's kind of like a dude looking off. The opposite of that, right? Because The city paper gave a five-star review. One of the highlights of Boro is its prestigious insect bowl rooftop restaurant where anyone can sit and observe the outside of the world and the contrast with the world. You find yourself back in the night and look back to the place that is low and raised and stuck in the place of the place of the eggs and the wizard. Is there meant to be some kind of metaphor there that it's about lambs or some innocence and symbolism of eating their hearts? Maybe? I don't know. Considering I got yeah, and then this is a new heading. I got the um all the uh, achievement. I think I'm at a point where the game is saved and I can come back to it later. This has been Eric playing Beckett. Game remains weird. Uh, we'll see if there's a payoff. If it's just about feelings, I may have to end up reading some kind of a um uh Walk through or something, some some kind of explanation to catch every single little thing they put into it. It seems very dense. It seems like they put a lot into this. Um, and sometimes I like dense metaphoric things. Um, we'll see. I think it's going to all depend on the payoff. Uh, see whether or not this is worth it. So anyway, this has been Eric playing Beck. I'll see you next time.